Today, we're going to be testing the caffeine levels in a bunch of ready-to-drink canned coffee products from around the world, and I'm really interested in the results that we're going to get. Now, in the past, we've used our caffeine analyzer to look at how you brew coffee might impact the caffeine levels. We've looked at whether there's big variance in the caffeine on high street chains in the UK when you just order an espresso. And today, I think this one has been heavily requested, and it should be a ton of fun. Now, the nice thing about canned ready-to-drink products is they're not impacted by brewing. Once you get it, you should know how much caffeine is in it, uh, and it should be consistent every time you buy that product. Well, in theory, anyway. Now, we've chosen four different countries and acquired some different cans from those places. But me testing this alone is not enough. We're going to add a little twist. We're going to make it a little bit difficult for me, too. So... This testing will be done blind to me, and then I'm going to taste these and see if I can tell, just from tasting, which ones are the most caffeinated and which ones are the least caffeinated. The idea there is, well, you don't have a caffeine meter, but you do have a sense of taste. And so if I can do it, you can probably do it too, and you can have a pretty good idea of how much caffeine you're ingesting, you know, based on what you're tasting. Or maybe you'll just have no idea, because I'll have no idea. Either way, it's going to be very interesting. Now, we're going to start with some cans and bottles from the UK. Controversially, there's some Starbucks product here. I don't know how much they regionalized the product. We bought this here in the UK, so it's going into the UK one. It isn't made in the UK, but I think it's important to the UK. But they make this stuff all over the world. There may be variants. We just don't know. Then we're going to go to Japan, the first place that I experienced canned coffee. There's canned coffee vending machines all over the cities. It's amazing. Uh, and we'll taste a bunch of product from there. And... See if that's more caffeinated than the UK or less caffeinated than the UK. Then we're going to go to Korea, uh, another big increasing kind of cold brew canned coffee or pou pouched coffee scene. I don't know. I've never seen this before. I'm looking forward to trying it. And then, of course, we have to end with the USA. Uh, this has been a massive kind of boom industry in the US. Ready to drink coffee, canned coffee, however you want to describe it. It's a really big deal. It's really popular. How much caffeine's going on in these drinks? We're going to find out. I'm not going to give you like a flavor assessment. That's not what this is about today. I'm not judging the quality of these drinks. I'm just trying to guess how much caffeine is in them. That's it. Maybe one day we'll do a giant taste off, but today is not that day. This is just about the caffeine. Now, if you're not familiar with a caffeine analyzer, and maybe why would you be, this is what we have here. It's very nice. It's very clever. It's the analyzer itself, but what you need to do the analysis is actually a little pack of stuff, for want of a better word. There's the stuff in here. Let me show you what's inside. Firstly, very clever little pipette. This lets you take a fixed amount of liquid in this little straw here. Very useful. Let's get some coffee now. We're going to add this fixed amount of coffee in the little straw bit to the reagent, like so. Marvellous. Then we're going to shake for 10 seconds. And then we need to put this little chip into it. Now you can see on the chip just here, a little space to put the liquid. So we take a little bit of our reagent mix, put it on the chip like so, and then we can perform our reading. So here we have a chlorogenic acid reading, which we don't really need, as well as a caffeine reading, very precise, down to the milligrams per deciliter, deciliter being 100 milliliters. The only downside of this thing is that it costs about five pounds per test, which is a little bit expensive, but we think very much worth it. So at this point, these have all now been tested, but I don't know the results. And I'm not going to lie, having poured them out, I'm tempted to kind of go off color a little bit. That's definitely going to sway me, but I'm going to start tasting. It's amazing how a little sugar makes you forget all about the caffeine. This is definitely tricky. I'm going to get these quite wrong, I think. And I'm going to say, this is our most caffeinated one. And you're going to immediately think you're an idiot. You're just picking the one that has, you know, no milk in it. That's why you think it's strong. But if it's been brewed with lots of water, I have learned in the past that the more water you brew with, the more extraction you can do. So I'm putting you in first place as the strongest beverage over here. Second, I want to go with, I want to go with Jimmy. I don't know why, there's just a bit more coffee flavor in this. I'm actually going to put this Starbucks in last. I think you're going to go into third place. And I think, I think these are the same. I think, but of course I think these are the same. They look the same. Do you know, I'm going to go with a little bit more in the caramel than the, the straight latte. Caffeine latte. 
This is my proposed ranking from strongest to weakest. Let's find out how I've done. Results, please. Thank you very much. United Kingdom. So exciting. Well, damn. Well, I got one right. First place with about 112 milligrams of caffeine for the whole can. So if you want to get into it, the machine we have works in deciliters, so per 100 mils. So it's 56 milligrams of caffeine per 100 mils for the minor figures, which is interesting. And it's quite a lot higher than second place, which is the Costa Latte, which is about down here. I had it in fifth. Not doing very well at this game. Unsurprisingly, though, Costa Caramel uh, in, in next. So here, 39 milligrams per 100 mils. Here, 36 milligrams per 100 mils, so pretty similar. Then we're into the uh, Starbucks triple shot. You'd have thought this would be up the top, triple shot, but 30 milligrams per 100 mils, so only 90 for the whole can. Then we got Jimmy's, uh, 27 milligrams per 100 mils, so 76 in the whole thing, so not a big caffeine dose there. And then at the bottom, the Frappuccino coffee drink. This definitely threw me. This comes in at 11.85 milligrams, Per 100 mils. So this whole bottle has about a quarter, a little bit more, but not even a third of the caffeine of this one here. So that's a pretty big range. I think that's super interesting and extremely surprising. Now again, some color variation on these ones from Japan. I, I'm not used to seeing milky coffees from Japan. Most of the ones I've tasted in Japan have been canned black coffee. I, I wish we had some more of these. Anyway, let's start tasting with by far the thickest looking black coffee I've seen in some time. Oh, wow. I'm just gonna go ahead now and say that's got the most caffeine in it because that's by far the strongest beverage, no doubt. Whoa. In comparison, incredibly chill. I, I would almost be tempted to put that at the bottom at this point. Oh no, maybe you. These two I think are gonna be down the bottom. Very sweet cappuccino. I'm gonna say Yeah, I'm gonna get Then you, I think that's my order. So I think the incredibly strong Boss Cafe, am I supposed to dilute this down? I feel like I am. I am supposed to dilute this down, one to four. That makes sense. Didn't read the bottle beforehand. That's gonna be intensely caffeinated. I will say really, really hard to pick the differences in milk drinks, even going by sort of strength. Let's get the results. Thank you very much. Japan. To no one's surprise, in first place, Boss Cafe, the concentrate here, at 109 milligrams of caffeine per you know, 100 mils, or in total, actually only 370 milligrams of caffeine, which I think would fall under my sort of daily allowance for caffeine. Now, second place, by strength, was in fact Poco Vanilla at 42.85. It just edges ahead of third place, because in third spot, in fact, was Boss Black, 42 milligrams, Per, or 42.5 per 100 mils. So not wildly caffeinated, but a, you know, a decent amount of caffeine. Interesting. I had it a little bit lower. My experience over the years has been intense flavor, mostly coming from roasts, like dark roasts in canned Japanese sort of coffee drinks. But actually that's a decent amount of caffeine, but a small can. So you'd only be like 78 milligrams in total. So you'd be good for, you know, quite a few of those a day, a day maybe five of those, but you know, would be just a little bit more than that. Coming in in um, fourth place is Poca Cappuccino. Where are you? This one here. There we go. At least I got this one as, as more caffeine than the milk coffee. They're very close though. So Poca Cappuccino, 39.65 milligrams per 100 mils. Uh, and here, 34.34 milligrams per 100 mils. So very close. There's a, a little bit of a range between the milk drinks, not a huge one. Uh, I don't know if that's enough to really worry about. You've gone from, say, 80 milligrams in a can up to about 100. So not a big range or something I really worry about. Interesting though, I wish we had more uh, of the canned black coffees from Japan. I just need to go to Japan and buy all of them, hundreds of them and have a giant head-to-head -head tournament and taste them all and, and find out which one's the best. That's a dream that I have that one day I hope will come true. Let's have a look at, at the cold coffee scene in Korea. I have no idea how this is gonna go. They're all black coffee, so that should be more interesting. In theory, this should correlate to strength, but I'm not as good at sort of detecting strength in cold coffee, especially darker roast coffee. That feels punchier. And that feels punchier still, but I might be tripped up by roast level there a little bit. I'm so thrown by that. Okay, moving on. 
The sugar has arrived. Mmm. Okay, this is really difficult, but I'm going to go with strongest, second strongest. These, I, they could all be the same. I'd be very surprised if there's a big difference. I'm going to put you in fourth. Honestly, don't know. My proposed ranking of strongest to least strong. Uh, this was not quite guessing, but I don't think I've done better than random, if I'm honest. Let's find out. Thank you so much. Korea. Uh -oh. Okay. I've not done very well. Now, the range is interesting here. So remember, this is per 100 milliliters. So number one, what do I have you? <laughs> this one uh, is number one, in fact. So I'll put you back up here. So 41.8 milligrams, but a near identical amount to the BTS. McNulty, where are you? I've done terribly here. Came in third, dropping down to 33.9 milligrams per 100 mils. Wow, okay. Top 25, almost identical to you, which is almost identical to size up coming in at 22 milligrams per 100. And then Ice Cafe, way down. 16.26 milligrams of caffeine per 100 mils. So like 30 milligrams in this whole pouch. Very gentle compared to, I think the biggest portion was the BTS actually, where are you? 270 mils, nine calories. Uh, yeah, but 111 milligrams of caffeine. That pretty thoroughly disproves any idea that humans are good at caffeine detection, or more specifically, that I'm any good at caffeine detection. I did not do well. Surprisingly low levels of caffeine, I would say, across all of these, which I think is probably notable. Now, before we get to the US canned coffees, I do want to talk about the experiences I've had buying these coffees online, because you use a bunch of different websites to get them, and occasionally I do feel like I've just kind of lost control of my personal information. I don't really know where it's going to end up, but I worry a lot less now, thanks to this video sponsor, which is Incogni, and I'll tell you about it during this short ad. Over the years, I've gone to great lengths to keep my private phone number, well, private, and yet I still get all these phone calls where I can't help but wonder, how did you get my number? And it turns out they probably bought it from a data broker. And that's where Incogni has been incredibly helpful. You see, the good news about data brokers is that if you ask them to remove your information, then they will. The bad news is there's a lot of them and that process would take a really long time. Now I'm aware I'm complaining about perhaps the, the least terrifying outcome, which is stuff like robocalls, but it goes all the way through to things like identity theft. You just don't want to lose control of your personal information. You can protect your privacy in three easy steps. Firstly, sign up and create an account. Two, we'll give them permission to go and contact data brokers on your behalf. And three, we'll sit back and watch them do the work. You'll get status updates to let you know how those requests are going, whether your data has been removed as you've asked. If you want to try it, well, you can click the link down in the description below. And the first 100 people to click that link and use the discount code will get 60% off. Thank you so much to Incogni for sponsoring this video. Now, I'm not gonna lie, going into this, I just presume all of these have more caffeine. I have no justification for this whatsoever, other than, you know, I now have cold brew gets made, and a lot of these are kind of based on cold brew style things. I've had a few of these over the years, but can I guess the caffeine content? No idea. It feels quite caffeinated. As to this, there's a syrupiness to these. A little bit more gentle, maybe. Oh, are you just the straight? Mm. I'm going to just say, on average, I think these have more caffeine. Mmm. I don't know. I'm going to start here. Making a few guesses. This really is not very scientific at all. Ultimately, what my guess here is only going to reinforce the fact that I don't think you, as a consumer, can easily tell the caffeine content based on tasting it, which I think is really interesting and actually really important. It's time for the results, please. From the USA. Coming in at the top, Stumptown. It tasted strong, but that is 81 milligrams per 100 mils, 247 milligrams for a single can. That's a, that's a good dose of caffeine. Second place, 
the blue bottle, 77 milligrams, so again, pretty hefty dose, smaller can, 182 milligrams for the whole can, which is very close uh, to the La Colombe, which comes in at 67 milligrams per 100. Uh, it does actually say on this 180 milligrams. We measured 180.4 milligrams. But that's almost identical to the Wandering Bear, which I had up at the top. It was not. Got the two at the bottom right, which is interesting. They just tasted a little less strong. Wandering Bear was 67 milligrams, so 220 for the whole dose. Two of those, and you're done for the day and a bit more. So anyway, about 59, 60. Good size can though, so 200 milligrams there. Now that the bottle size here is obviously not designed to be consumed in a single sitting, but it's 42 milligrams of caffeine uh, per 100 mils. Sip for sip, this has seemingly twice the caffeine of this. Now I know there's issues with sample size and, and selection and all that stuff, but just based on what we tasted, interesting to note that the average for the UK, caffeine per 100 mils was 33.7. In Japan, it was about 53. In Korea, 29, so similar to the UK. And the US, I think notably higher at sort of 66 on average. So more caffeine per beverage if you're buying a kind of US style product, it would seem. Certainly the specialty type ones anyway. For me, a really surprising tasting. I, I don't know what I expected, but not the kind of variation that we've seen. But now I wanna hear from you. Do you check how much caffeine is on the can or on the bottle before you buy it? Is that important to you? Would you check it if it was there on every kind of caffeinated beverage? I kinda wanna see it on a can of Coke, I wanna see it on a Red Bull, and I wanna see it on canned coffee if I'm honest. Caffeine is a psychoactive drug, it's the world's most popular one, but you know, it's something we kind of take blind and I don't think that's necessarily a good thing. And I know that sometimes we just can't know. You can't know how much is in an espresso very easily, but you absolutely can know how much is here and I think we should. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Let me know if, if there's a country whose cold brew or canned coffees we should you know, check out and, and test in future. Let me know other things you want us to test with the caffeine meter. We can do more, we will do more. In fact, maybe we'll look at cold brew one day, the science and, and extraction of caffeine in cold brew, but I make no promises. But for now, I say thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.